Hey everyone, Robin here from postprofessionals.de, back from a somewhat longer break, just because there's been so much other stuff to do. But I'm hoping and I actually plan to do a lot more English tutorials as opposed to German ones, as I have been up until now, all surrounding Final Cut Pro 10 and motion in the near future. If that's something that you'd like to see, then maybe show me with the old thumbs up or even a sub and click on the little bell to be notified once it actually happens. But enough of that, there's been yet another free update for Final Cut Pro 10, motion and compressor, the 27th actually for Final Cut Pro since its inception. And with this video, I just wanna give you a quick overview of what's new so that maybe you don't have to look quite as hard or even some maybe even see something that you hadn't caught yourself. Basically all the, in my opinion, biggest, most relevant additions and or improvements. So let's take a look. So after installing the update and starting Final Cut Pro for the first time, you get the usual what's new splash screen with a list of the top four new features according to Apple. Starting with the all new workflow extensions, this being a new API, as they're called, for third-party developers that finally allows them to directly integrate functionality into the Final Cut Pro interface. I'll actually be doing an extra video to show this off using the brand new Frame.io workflow extension that was just announced, which will make your working with their already brilliant site even easier and more productive. Here, just a quick preview. <laughs> But I also know that users of certain media asset management applications can look forward to some very interesting updates in the near future as well. And from past experience, I think we can expect to see various other very nice third-party improvements for Final Cut Pro that take advantage of this new API. So let's wait and see what they come up with. Either way, it's definitely a huge improvement. The other three in this list, namely batch sharing, in other words, batch export, the new video noise reduction filter, as well as the two new timecode windows, are features we of course want to look at now, next to a few bigger and smaller features and improvements that aren't listed here. So I'll just click continue, and we can take a look at the new batch sharing. The feature that I personally have been begging for for a long time, as I know a lot of other people have too. Why, I think is easily demonstrated by this library in particular that has my rather comprehensive German language Final Cut Pro 10 training in it. Here you see that this library consists of a whopping 130 chapters, or rather projects. And I think you can probably roughly imagine what this meant up until now when it came time to export these for upload. Best case scenario, I literally had to hit Command E 130 times and then return just as often to get everything exported. Just keeping track of what I had actually already exported and what I hadn't was in itself a tedious task. Well, fortunately, that's now history. Now, if I want to just export, say, the first eight chapters, or rather share them, as Final Cut calls it, I can select all of them and then simply right click any one of them and choose share eight project and then the desired destination. Or select the same command via the file menu or even send eight of them to a compressor all at the same time. Or do the same through the share menu at the top right. Whichever share option I choose, I get the usual export window. But now I see all of these selected projects listed on the left side with the usual description, creator, and tags field on the right. Whereby, obviously, if I were to enter anything into the description field where it currently says multiple values, then the entry would, of course, be applied to every project being exported, assuming that's even practical. Leaving this untouched will, of course, export each project with the description that I entered in the project's information inspector. The dimension and frame rate information is shown since it's the same for all projects in this case, just no time indicator since each project has a different length. On the right, I do see that I will be creating eight files and what I think is a really nice touch, a total size of all projects. In other words, what Final Cut Pro estimates the joint size of all the clips will be. 
But if I want to know the estimated size for individual projects, or rather clips, I just have to mouse over the value field and I get a pop-up with the size of each project, or rather clip, listed individually. Nice. And as usual, the chosen destination is listed at the bottom left. After clicking next and selecting where I want to save them, we can see in the background tasks window how in fact all of the projects are being rendered one after another. This of course goes for every other type of media in the event as well, be it audio, video, images, or even just a partial selection or multiple selections in a clip, or maybe a clip that has a lot applied.